Hi, welcome back to Blue Glow Electronics. Trying to get caught up on my Ask Mark inbox. It's gotten fairly long. So, um, let's, I grabbed this one out because I really liked it. Uh, a guy named, named Joseph sent me a question. Mark, where do you land on this? I love the feel of a good rotary pot, but I like the perfect channel balance attainable with a dual-stepped attenuator. It's a really good question, and I think before I can answer it, i got to kind of explain to the audience here what each of these two things are. Okay, first and foremost, a, a rotary, rotary potentiometer or a stepped attenuator, at the end of the day, they are both the same device electrically. They're trying to achieve the same uh, results electrically. Uh, they just go about it in a slightly different way. Here on the left-hand side, you'll see in a rotary potentiometer, what you have is you have a resistive track that goes all the way from lug 1 all the way to lug 3. And let's just make this up. Let's say it was 100 k ohms of resistance between lug 1 here all the way around this resistive track to lug 300. So if you put a voltmeter uh, or a digital multimeter set to read resistance and you put it on lugs 1 and 3 here, you would measure 100 k. But it has another connection here in the middle, connection number 2, and it is the variable part. So depending on where you've turned the knob, it may have some, if you're connected between number one and number two, um, if you were over here, it would be about a fourth of the way over here to the full 100K. So you, you would likely have around 25K between lug number two and lug number one. And kind of uh, conversely here, you would have about 75K between number lug number two and number three. So as you move this wiper over, when you get it in the middle, it would be at 50%. So you would have 50K here, 50K here. And if this was a volume pot, you would have achieved halfway um, of your volume at that point. And similarly, as you keep turning it, and you can see the electronic schematic symbol here for a potentiometer. It is kind of a connection here at the end to here, the resistive value all the way across. And by the way, there's this tap along the way that you can slide to pull off less than the full amount as needed. Okay, this is a uh, amplifier that's the 807 amplifier I built. So I just thought I would show you here. This 100K pot here on the left, if you'll notice, um, it has one end that goes to ground. It has the other end that goes to the input. And then there's a tap that takes it over to... Uh, the grid of the first tube. And so what this forms is kind of a voltage divider network. If you turn this uh, potentiometer all the way to one end, then basically what you've done is you have um, created a voltage divider that sends all of your signal basically to ground. In other words, volume is all the way down at zero at that point, And very little or none gets to the first gain stage of your tube. Thus, you have no volume in your amplifier. If you turn that potentiometer or move that um, wiper to the other end, all the way to the right, then what you end up with is all of your signal, in other words, very little resistance, um, going between your input and the grid of the first tube, and tons of resistance, all 100K, between that point and ground. In other words, um, you know, current will take the path of least resistance. So if it sees 100K to ground or 0K coming into this 1K resistor here, it'll take that path. And so you'll be then putting full current load into the grid of that tube or pull, full voltage load and uh, driving that uh, first stage of the tube. So that's how a potentiometer that, like uh, Joseph's uh, mentioning, actually works. As you one end sends it all to ground, the other end sends it all to the tube, somewhere in between sending some of it to ground, some of it to the tube in a voltage divider network uh, to give you something between uh, kind of no volume or 100% volume. And that's typically why you want a volume pot. So uh, when your wife says to you, hey, turn that thing down, you can, uh, you can reach over and spin it a little bit to the left and it's not so loud in the house at that point. So that's what we're trying to achieve electrically. Okay, so if this is the schematic symbol and kind of the uh, electrical uh, how it works representation over here, 
This first picture here on the right is your typical potentiometer. So that's what that looks like in a physical form. You've got a knob there you can uh, kind of turn in the middle. Below it you've got a shaft that you mount through a hole, uh, typically in your amplifier chassis. You tighten down that nut and then it can't turn anywhere and you've got that little tab over there to the left that pokes through a hole in your amp that keeps it from spinning. And then you got your three connections there to solder to. And um, as you turn that uh, knob, it performs what we showed you there on the left. However, typically in an audio amplifier, down here on the bottom left is what you may see more commonly. And that is what is considered a ganged, uh, G-A-N-G-E-D, set of potentiometers. In other words, it's one potentiometer mounted right behind another potentiometer. They have electrically have nothing to do with each other, these two pots. However, they share the same shaft um, going through both of them. So in other words, as you're adjusting one potentiometer, the front one, you're also adjusting the back one um, at the same time. So if you're at, uh, let's say that was 100K, 100K um, end to end, and you're at 50%, you should have 50, you should be measuring 50K between pin number one and number two on both the front and the back potentiometer. And then you can see here on the right beside of it is what is commonly known as a ALPS, um, Blue ALPS uh, capacitor. And what they're known for is they, um, they use some really good um, uh, resistive tracks inside of those. It's a certain carbon type. It's a really smooth feel. And uh, a lot of the audio guys like them because you don't hear scratchiness as you turn the volume knob. It's a really soft, smooth turn and feel. Okay, so if we kind of compare and contrast that with a stepped attenuator, it's the exact same thing. Just instead of having this resistive track along the way over here, what you've got is a whole pile of fixed resistors that your wiper would kind of snap between. And you can see the picture over here on the left hand side. So it's kind of the way it looks. You bring your signal in here, you've got a whole series of resistors here and you're kind of moving your wiper up and down between these resistors and then you kind of take your um, your value out on the other side over here so it's the same effect just instead of um, a wiper going along a carbon track you're actually snapping um, it's like a switch and most of these like this one right here is a 24 step attenuator so as you turn the shaft on this there's 24 little clicks you would go through, in other words, 24 resistor combinations um, to give it different values instead of a constantly uh, kind of wiping track over here like this. And you can see different variations of how these get made. Some of these just have tons of stack precision resistors like this, and this is a gained one. So you've got left channel here and right channel here. This one's one. Um, it actually uses, as it switches between all these different little poles here, um, it actually uses a bunch of little surface mount resistors in between here. So you kind of get the same effect. This one's not ganged, but you can see here it would have 10 or 11 steps to it. There again, another ganged set here. You can see as you turn this knob, you're basically going from this set of resistors to this set, to this set, to this set. Same here on across the line. So you have these very fixed points. So you may go from zero resistance to 100 ohms of resistance to 200 ohms, 300 ohms, 400 ohms. It's probably a little bigger steps than that as you go between because most of these are 100, 100k pots. And so you're typically going, you know, maybe 1k, 5k, 10k, uh, kind of along. And some pots are linear. In other words, it's even from one end to the other, and some are logarithmic. In other words, um, the further you go along, um, the uh, kind of tighter the spacing of the values in between. But they both achieve the same results electrically. So back to Joseph's question, where do I land on it? I agree, I love the feel of a good rotary pot. I absolutely love the Alps pots. By the way, I think they've been, they've, they're no longer made. However, there are, the Chinese took over um, kind of copying them about five or ten years ago. And I think their copies are pretty darn good. I've used them in quite a few amplifiers. As a matter of fact, the 807 amp that I built, I used a uh, Chinese copy of a uh, 
Blue Alps and uh, I've had great success out of them. So uh, as long as they're making them, I'm okay with using them because they're pretty darn cheap. They're like 10 bucks. Um, but he says, I like the perfect channel balance attainable with a dual step attenuator. I'm not sure I agree with that statement. Um, I kind of do. Um, but here's the, here's the gotcha. Well, what if your amplifier is not perfectly balanced? Um, and you go to adjust the volume and you, uh, you know, a fixed attenuator, you're going to have, let's just say, 10k ohms on the left channel, 10k ohms on the right channel, and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, even though the left side of your amplifier internally, let's say you got weaker tubes on the left side, might not be as loud. You have no ability to adjust that out. And you kind of get the same effect with a ganged pot because um, they're kind of tied to each other and there's nothing you can do independently to adjust the left channel volume versus the right channel volume. And so you used to see some amplifiers years ago built. I remember some Scott models and some Heath kit and some other different ones where you kind of had the volume knob, but it was and there was an inner and an outer knob you could turn um, to adjust one volume slightly louder than the other. That's kind of the uh, panacea of what you'd like to see, but you just don't see that done much. Um, two separate volume knobs. Part of the problem is then it becomes subjective to your ears and which channel is better, stronger, or weaker, that type thing. So, um, But I kind of get what he's saying here in his question. The perfect channel, channel balance is that uh, you, know, you kind of have these very fixed step points you're going through and uh, both channels would be, you know, because they use a lot of precision resistors in these things, would be precisely the same left and right. That is a big assumption, though, that your amplifier is balanced perfectly and the left and right channel um, would be perfect with uh, the, the same input feeding into both sides of it. So... Based on that, there is no perfect answer, and thus then I like the feel of a good rotary pop better. I've got a couple bottle head units I built at one point in time, and I used some really high-end precision 24-step um, volume uh, stepped attenuators. And at the end of the day, I'm always searching for a volume in between the two points that it would go to. Um, so if I had my vote, I'd go back to the... Uh, 10 to $15 Blue Alps uh, potentiometers, and uh, I've had nothing but great luck out of them. I've never had them uh, get scratchy. I've never had them uh, give me problems. So uh, it's just my two cents worth. Um, this right here would be the winner if, uh, if I had my vote. Thanks for watching, everybody.